Good day. So, we are back with the Christmas castle event, and we are moving on to level 4 today. So, of course, holiday reunion, like all castle events, we're, we're just trying to speed through all of these individual levels, learning more about the characters in the event as we go along, and uh, basically this whole event is just the, the children of Gunhilda getting really angsty with each other. But either way, season points, and we move on up to level four. And since we're trying to clear things as quickly as we can, of course, using set maps is really important now. And we do have a few of these in our Discord server. You know, people post these sort of maps all the time. You'll see that this is the one for level four here. So they're all labeled with which path to go on. And we do have paths for every level in these. So if you want to use any of the set paths, then you can go and check those out on our Discord server because, you know, that's the easiest way to get the chests open as quickly as possible and potentially get an early key on every level. And I will be uploading videos for every single level eventually, but we've also got two new dragons to get hatching today. The first one being Little Gentle Dragon, which of course was the boss challenge dragon from last week. Because of their horns and spines, gentle dragons are sometimes misunderstood. They're actually quite warm to the touch and like to hum soothing melodies when bedtime rolls around. And I really do like the colours on gentle, you know, nice pastel pinks, very cute looking dragon. And we also have that stocking dragon from the brand new cake craze event to hatch in a second as well. But you know, we're getting closer and closer to 600 on our main Windows account here. Finally, you'd think it would take a billion jillion years, but you know, adding new dragons doesn't always happen every day, but um, you know, especially if you're doing lots of dungeon grinding, you tend to get a lot of dragons, and I usually uh, skip the dungeon grinding bit. Um, but we will be moving on a little bit further into level 4 as well today, but first level 20 gentle and a level 20 stocking to start off a day. Look at him go! Big, big horns on her head. Very cute. So, let's go ahead and hatch Mr. Stocking now that he is ready. Very, very fluffy looking egg, by the way. I would love to snuggle up to this one. So, Stocking, like I said, was the major reward from the Cake Craze event, which, um, you know, a new style of event. At least we didn't fail it catastrophically, which is nice. But anyway, holly jolly Stocking Dragons enjoy hanging around the hut. Arth. Is that half? Earth? I I'm, I'm, don't actually remember how to say it. Where they bask in the warmth of cozy fires and steel bites of this trainer's holiday stews and roasting marshmallows. Nice. And one thing that I've seen people pointing out is the fact that for some reason the stocking dragon is incredibly small. Have you ever seen those memes where it's just like, he is very small? That is the stocking dragon. I don't know why. It's just like they've opted to make this dragon's model absolutely tiny. Like, look at it. It doesn't even fill up the... <laughs> look how tiny that dragon is. Should I even level it up, actually? I'm just thinking just having some mini ant dragon might actually be quite entertaining. But compared to Thief there, it's like... <laughs> he's infinitely larger than little stocking there. Yeah, I might just keep it in its baby form. But look at him. Little fluffy little boots on and everything. Why are you so tiny? You know, if there was a way to like compare dragons via size, I wish that there was, just to see exactly how tall this dragon is. But it, it takes food from like up there. So I can see that the model's technically bigger than the actual dragon, but I don't know. Just a weird dragon. And is this a new eating animation or am I going mad? This definitely looks like a new eating animation and the wings are moving weirdly. You know, lots of strange things going on as of this dragon, so I'm actually quite happy to own it. I don't know, sometimes we just get weird things happening with dragons. It's just so random. Why are you so small? <laughs> like, imagine putting it into a habitat that has like five or six dragons in it. You wouldn't even be able to see it. Ah, oh, bless his cute little heart. Anyway. Moving on from the actual hatching, like I said, we do have the event to continue on with. And so for level four, the first cheapest path, as I mentioned in that screenshot that we've got here, is actually going up to the chest on the left hand side. 
And you've got the choice of either going to the left or the right up here. And a simple um, calculation using a digital calculator showed that it's actually cheaper to go to the right and then just do this battle and then hop all over to the left to get to this chest here. You know, that's all that it is when we're trying to work out what the cheapest paths are. It's literally just type some values into a calculator and hope that they're correct. And then you'll see that on this side, there's also two paths that you can take, but the one on the left obviously is looking quite expensive at 300 per tile, which means it's gonna be cheaper to go to the right hand side, pass over the battles in the center, to get to this chest here. And that is gonna be chest number two. So then passing over to the fight is chest number three is up here. And then this is gonna be number four, followed by number five right on that right hand side. And this is what we're going to be doing for the entire remainder of the event. You know, we're on level four, we've got eight days left, so we should be okay. Um, generally though, level six in these events takes about two days to two and a half days, and level five might take a day to a day and a half. So realistically, if you save yourself like three to four days to do the final two levels, you should be okay. But um you know, it depends on what you're doing. I know that lots of people are sort of stuck inside at the moment, especially in, in the UK. <laughs> um, but uh, maybe that's a blessing in disguise. Not having to go outside for Christmas may actually work in your favour. Also, I really want to get the sweater unlocked so that I can get to breeding candy cane, because I have hatched a candy cane before, but it was not on this account. Same with quite a few other dragons, so I'm still trying to work back the dragons that I got a long time ago but never actually hatched on windows so you know I, I do get confused a lot these days with dragons because I'll be like yeah I've got that dragon I, I know I've I know I've seen that dragon before it's like yeah but it was on a different account silly goose happy to get some bonus gems there by the way that looks fabulous to me but overall I'm just happy that we can sort of chill during this uh you know, Christmas event for now, because even though we're still working on those six hour timers, it's only for 10 days instead of, you know, 28. And uh, we don't have the entire dragon board to worry about. You know, at least with the maps, in a sense, you can sort of very, to a very small extent, you can sort of control how you handle the event, because with dice rolling, it is really RNG as to how quickly you get to move on. Whereas at least with the castle events, we know what the values of the tiles are. We know what elemental restrictions there are. So, um, yeah, I, I just prefer castle events in that sense easily over the dice events. But you'll see that we're still making our way through this, uh, this map with the reduced scaling on the dragons after everything broke. But on the plus side, you may have noticed that we do actually have a an epic wonder on our Nezha dragon these days and it's actually kind of huge. If I was going to pick any sigil that I wanted an epic of first it would probably be either a wonder or an acceptance because you know you'll, you'll see that with my combos of dragons pretty much like three of them have acceptance and either havoc or witchcraft and then I still have Andy and Raid with a uh, Purity Daredevil, and it's not necessarily because they're the super optimal best choices for those dragons, it's just I've found that in very, very, very rare scenarios, even though Daredevil Purity is, uh, you know, kind of risky at times these days, it does still work against some very specific fights, mainly where you need to one-shot the first dragon, say if it's got two legendary sigils, if you can one-shot that first dragon and make sure that it doesn't one-shot your whole team, that is pretty much the only time I really use that combo. Apart from that, Wander Acceptance is still easily the strongest combination of sigils in this game. And then people will be like, yeah, but what about the evasions and, you know, all the other sigils that we've got that have been, uh, you know, upgraded? The thing is, Wander Acceptance is a combo that um, is generally on two different dragons. So, you know, one dragon has the wonder and the other dragon has the acceptance. So then you've got another slot to put another sigil on there. So then you'll see that Nezha 
has just always had evasion on there because I've never wanted to pay the money to swap it off. I put it on there once as a meme and I never took it off. Um, it would have been better last patch for us to have Wonder Acceptance actually on Nezha. But again, I just never wanted to spend the money to change the sigil around. But it's going to mean that with dragons like Saini or dragons like uh, Hermes dragon, if they do have acceptance on them, it's going to be like, is it worth swapping off the witchcraft for a different one or the havoc for, I don't know, if we ever end up getting legendaries for like a, a legendary evasion just because of the sheer amount of defense it gives, but then obviously you'll miss out on the Havoc damage. But as of right now, if you have Rare and Epic Sigils, it is still by far the best, most consistent combo in the game to go with Wonder Acceptance. And it's really, really weird that Purity Daredevil was nerfed in the latest patch, or the latest update that we had in DML, but Wonder Acceptance wasn't. In fact, Wonder Acceptance was already, like, the most consistent out there, and it was used alongside Purity Daredevil. But then they buffed Wonder for some reason. And that's, like, the strangest thing in the world to me, that we had a combo that was already incredibly good, and then they decided to buff Wonder, and now, as of the new sigil changes with the attack boost, they buffed it again! So now we basically only really have one combination in the game that everyone can use and just destroy every arena fight, every sigil map battle. Because even though we're going against dragons that have one or soon to be two legendary sigils, Wonder Acceptance is enough to deal with it. Obviously if you end up failing and don't one shot them, they'll end up one shotting you, but it's just so strange that we decided to nerf the Purity Daredevil combo, which came with really big risks. Obviously, every time you attack, it reduces your HP. And then we just buffed the already more consistent combination. It's been really weird, the way that we've handled sigils. And I know that some people would say that, you know, the thing with Wonder Acceptance is that it's only really super good when you have a Divine. But lots of people have divines these days. Like, even if you don't have Nezha, because of the way that things have changed, it's actually probably going to be better to have two divines on your team. One as the bless user, and the other divine or... Actually, it doesn't really have to be a divine. It could be an ancient, but another dragon with, say, water and earth. That's technically the better combo these days. So you've got the bless user who... I don't know, let's just say Apollo for the sake of it. So we'd start off with Apollo with Wonder, so then he'd go on Bless and the other dragons with Acceptance, and then one of the other two dragons has Water, Earth, and it can buff on the second turn or third turn, and that's essentially what people do in the dungeon. Say it's a, you have a defensive dragon on one with Metal, an Ancient with Metal, and Water, say, I don't know, you can have a lot of different combos, but then you get buffed, and then you go and steal the enemy's damage, then you put up your metal, and then you've got two dragons that keep buffing, one that keeps healing, and you just completely destroy the dungeon. So, still to this day, even though it did get nerfed a bit, metal is still really good in the dungeon. Of course, metal is one of the few elements I do not have on my team yet. I would have had metal a very long time ago, but... Apollo came out, and uh, rather than me leveling up the metal dragon that I planned, it was like, you know, I've waited so many years. Even though I already have the elements that Apollo has, I just have to do it for the beam. I'm sorry. I also did promise at one point to level up a ceremony to level 100. That's still in the works. However, as Apollo has the same elements as ceremony, just in divine form, I had to do it. But realistically, if I was to pick an optimal comp instead of a meme comp, I definitely would have leveled up a Metal Dragon. Ideally, it would have been a Metal Ancient, but I don't have any Metal Ancients. Um, so, you know, I'm still stacking up food for now. I need to decide whether I'm going to wait for an Ancient Metal to come along again, 
or if I'm just going to end up leveling up an Erlang Shen at this point because I don't have Void and I don't have Metal. And even though it would be really good to wait for an Ancient with Metal and Void, there's no guarantee we're going to get one. So rather than waiting for the next 10 years for something that may never happen, it's probably in our best interest to at least get the elements now. I mean, to be honest, even though I've got two elements still remaining that I don't have on my team, I haven't really been encountering any problems in any events because of it. Because I know there have been times in past events where we've had events that only um, have metal as the required element for a fight. But I haven't actually run into any issues. So, I don't know. This is the same reason why when people ask about, you know, what dragons to use on their team and that they need to use three team members and level them up equally. Usually you actually don't because not every event is going to ask for every single element. Obviously, the more you have, the more reliable you're going to be in events because the easier they're going to be. But again, that's not always going to be the case. And for a long time, we went along and did events with just one or like one dragon's worth of elements. So Andy pretty much solo cleared a lot of events on his own with just three elements. And that's possible. So although I understand why people always harp on, you know, have as many dragons as possible, have a variety of elements, that's still true. You should still do that. But I think people put sometimes way too much emphasis on it and uh, it ends up holding a lot of players back. Because obviously it's much faster to progress through the map if you've only got one dragon to level up compared to three and you know the android account when we went through and did that replay recently ish it did show just how quickly you can steamroll this game these days like easily within six months you can finish off the entire map and get a level 100 because you just steamroll through these maps these days with sigils easily if you have a wonder acceptance comp or we got Purity Daredevil, you can easily clear this whole map within six months of a brand new account. Not as in a returning account, I mean like day one, brand new account start, easily within six months you can get there. Which, two years ago, I would have laughed if someone would have suggested the idea. But that's just how sigil power scaling has gone. And although all players have benefited greatly. Genuinely, newer players have really gotten a massive boost from them. And in that sense, I'm actually really happy about it. I'm really happy about the way they introduced sigils because of only that reason. Because it gave new players a way to sort of catch up in a way that they couldn't really do it before. So, you know, there's some praise where praise is due because you know it can suck as a new player as you're sitting there on day 10 and you're just looking at all these people with loads of level 100s and it's just like well <laughs> I'm never gonna catch up but you can definitely help you know close the gap a little bit more than you used to be able to at least so anyway that is a lot of mini rambling from me today so I'm gonna continue on with uh, progressing in the castle event uh, don't do me and accidentally use the wrong breeding combo <laughs> when you get to level 4 because I just rebred a, a war out of habit. Don't do that. Remember that as you progress in the levels you will have to change your breeding pair. But um, for the most part, most important thing, logging in every reset, clearing out all the points you can. And obviously choosing the cheapest paths to get you to the chests. But anyway, that is going to be me for now. So again, if you do have any other questions please feel free to ask and uh, join the Discord server if you want. You know, we've still got all the maps here. And, um, you know, if you've ever got any questions about castle events, pass to take, things like that, team comps, we've got loads of people in the server that can help you out when I'm not around. So that's the reason I end up harping on about the Discord server quite a bit. But trust me, it has helped people before. Anywho... For now, best of luck. Uh, I also hope you've been actually doing your Dragon Master Pass, unlike me. <laughs> but until next time, I do wish you the very best of luck.